And we're back. Nimrindir and Helwig, the last warrior, coming back for more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Um, you'll notice uh, Helwig is currently standing over a, a bag of loot. So you may recall in our last video, uh, yeah, I kind of had this thing where I thought I might be able to collect everything from the shield maze and sell it to the merchant. I could collect everything, but you can't go back. So this loot box consists, this loot bag, that little bag, somehow holds uh, nine suits of uh, leather armor, seven suits of scale mail, sorry, nine suits of studded leather. You get the idea. You can count up what's in here if you're really curious. Um, you can see it weighs close to 850 pounds. I was barely able to like, lift, like I was barely able to move when I finished this. I also missed like a little bitty, you know, cutscene, like, and it's not my cutscene, it's like an introductory thing with a, a red message, but, um, anyway, so, um, after we finished up the shield maze, um, following the passage led us, um, I think it was Sila, yeah, I can hear the sounds of battle from above, out of the pan and into the fire, um, yeah, so we're currently in a place called the, uh, Grey Garrison, ooh, well, there's a, a big old loot bag, alright, what's in here, um, some coal, sure, fossil fuels, why not, people want them, um, so, an urn and some money. Move Why out. that's down here? Oh, what's this X? <laughs> this deep rift leads to the catacombs under the city where the Neethers live. Again, remember, we call them Neethers. All right, well, we've got a Nevia and Horgus Glum with us while we go. Um, is there anything in here? There's a box in here. All right. I feel like I shouldn't have walked across that grate. Yeah, I know it's just like a harmless visual effect, but, you know. All right, so we found a uh, long spear that can stay. Shining scales, all right. Some incense, cool, and some more money, okay. And then we've got this long spear, okay. Awesome, fan dabby dabbies. Okay, so there's a fight going on in the Grey Garrison and it's basically gonna be up to us to turn the tide. Upstairs it is. I'm curious if we get, like, a dramatic, like, in-engine cutscene or something. Nope. We just appear. And I can go back to the basement if I so choose. We got some trashed stuff. And I probably ought to switch to Sela no up front, you know. Hey, look, there's a big old battle. Nope. Divine Weapon Bar. Okay. So that's a paladin who just keeps killing some devils. Or demons, rather. They're not devils, they're demons. Alright. So, we have some soldiers here. Oh, Erebeth! Okay, so, yeah, we've actually heard Erebeth's name before. Um, the half-orc before me, wearing armor adorned with Yamade's golden swords, is clearly exhausted. She obviously hasn't gotten much sleep over the last few days. Soot on her face and fresh blood on her sword. Yep, there's very fresh blood on her sword. We can kind of see it all around her. Her hazel eyes are hard and focused, and her firm voice sounds accustomed to giving orders. She sizes us up, surprised, judging whether we're friend or foe, and opens her mouth to ask something, but freezes when she spots a Nevia. <laughs> wow, Irabeth is huge. I don't think I realized, like, the size difference is, like, tremendous. By the goddess. Nevi, I... I'd almost lost all hope. Everything's fine, Beth. I'm here. I'm here. This here's a new friend. He rounded up those of us who survived the fall and led us up to the surface. Without him, we'd never have made it out. I mean, and, I mean, and Nevia pulled her weight. She picked off a few things, because, you know, she's probably higher level than us, but, you know. Let me introduce you to my wife. Arabeth Tirabade, head of the Eagle Watch. I appreciate you telling me that that is a silent E and a long A and not Tirabade. That's probably where I would have gone first. So I really appreciate it, game. Nice touch. Mm. Until okay. the army arrives, I'm the temporary warden of Canabras. And you're just in time. As you can see, we're in the middle of a battle. And thank you for getting Anevia out of there. Uh... <laughs> Let's see here. Um, 
Sure. Let's ask first. Yeah, what's the situation in the city? This is this is probably what we should ask first. The city's gone. Most of the defenders, including the dragon Terendalev, fell in the first few hours. The civilians either fled or died in the chaos. The place is overrun with cultists and demons. Okay. So, so not good. I'm getting not good. I mean, granted, we saw Terendalev get decapitated at the start of the game. So, before I, you know, right after I, was it, punched the, you know, thing? Don't talk like that. Canabres hasn't fallen. Not while it still has defenders like you and me. Sweet words don't change the grim truth. <laughs> Camellia, a spot of sunshine and the darkest day. No, she's right. Thank you, Knight. Until we no longer have the strength to hold a weapon, until Ioma Day abandons us, we will fight for Canabras. I actually imagine this now that Hellwig just intentionally pronounces the name Iyama Day like I do, just to just to troll all of the you know Iyamadeans that I'm going to encounter over the course of this game. Uh, well, technically we know where we are because Steel identified the Grey Garrison. It. Until recently, it served as barracks for the Crusaders, but it's now been taken over by cultists. Well, we'll just have to do something about that, won't we? Um. <laughs> uh. Okay, well, here. We met some Neethers who live beneath Canabras. This is Lan. Most people in Canabras think that the children of the First Crusaders are simply a legend. Other people say that the day you emerge on the surface heralds the start of the end of the world. I'm not superstitious, but the situation is apocalyptic, all right. Having a living legend on our side can't hurt. I appreciate that she called them Children of the First Crusaders instead of saying Mongrel. You know, that's nice. Maybe it's because, like, we're talking to a half-orc. You know, culturally, they're often kind of ostracized, so... Come on, living legend? A walking folktale, maybe? I just need to make sure I don't turn into a running joke. Yeah, too late, Lan. That, that whole, you know, what Winduog has told us about you, you're kind of already a running joke. Like, it's going to be hard not to keep doing callbacks to that. Uh, <laughs> something tells me, I, 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 this is the dumbest thing ever. I wonder about the location of a cultist den. Of course, I actually, I still need to read the orders that were on Hellwig. Oops. So, it's the target when of this battle. the demons attacked the city, their main target was the Wardstone. I trust I don't have to explain to you what the Wardstone is and how important it is to the Crusaders. We must retake it at any cost, or the fall of Canabras will be the beginning of the end of the Crusades, and with them, the rest of the world. Um, in, in lieu of opening the glossary to tell you what the Wardstone is, um, it's basically sort of like a, you know, series of magical obelisks that are essentially holding the demonic, you know, mess of the world wound in and not letting it spill all over the rest of the planet. So, yeah, so she's not wrong. I see that you had a difficult journey to the surface. You need to rest. But there's a lot riding on this battle. I have no right to command you, but I'm asking you to help us. Okay, let's see how accurate my description is. Tell me about this Wardstone. Why is it so important? The Wardstones are a gift of Ioma Day. Created personally by her herald, a mighty angel, and a general of the Celestial Armies. The Wardstones keep the world wound from expanding. They stand along the border of the territory controlled by the demons, creating a barrier to keep them inside. The Canabras Obelisk was the first to be placed. It is the key to the whole barrier. We cannot leave it in the hands of those monsters from the Abyss. I guess it's a good thing that, like, its power still is still functioning, even though it's been, like, launched from its original location into this building. That's good. Uh... <laughs> sure, we're going to play the dupe here. How did the Wardstone end up in the Grey Garrison? The demons have long laid siege to Canabras, but this time, their Lord Descari appeared in the flesh. He ripped the Wardstone from the ground and hurled it halfway across the city to here. I thought the stone was destroyed, but it seems all is not lost yet. Descari has gone, but the Wardstone is surrounded by a horde of those creatures. 
What are they going to do to it? Nothing good, that's for certain. Yeah, again, probably not wrong. But how did he do that? He's a demon. The Wardstone should have burned his filthy hide. Also a fair point. It should have. But what happened, happened. We don't know why. <laughs> I have important information about the location of a cultist den. Very good. Report to me in full <laughs> when we get back to the Defender's Heart. It's our temporary headquarters. Right now, the most dangerous cultists are here. The ones occupying the Grey Garrison. Yeah, that checks out. I love that, you know, <laughs> I've got this letter. It's like I'm a, I'm a, like a mailman, you know, po letter carrier. Like, yeah, er, I have this letter. It must, you know, we must get it to the proper authorities. Um, let's not waste any more time, I guess, um, to battle. All right. That's the spirit. You, take Anavia to the rear. The rest of you with me. <laughs> I mean, she's injured, so I'm not going to, you know, complain about that, but it is kind of funny. I like that they put in a sound effect of Hogus Gwurm, like, you know, panting. Um. Lord Hogus Gwurm, forgive me. Even she I did not that realize way. we had civilians among us. My people will escort you somewhere safe. To the extent that anywhere in Canopolis can be said to be safe right now. <laughs> I love that even she kind of says it, Hogus Gwurm. That's amazing. Um. My money, please. You, what? Hey, hey. But you, you, money, money. I was supposed to get money. That's right. Fighting spirit is the one thing that we've got plenty of. <sighs> Actual fighting power? That's not so great. Fighting know-how? Even worse. But fighting spirit? <laughs> At least we're rich in that. Speak for yourself, Lan. <sighs> Holy cow! For I own the day. For the queen. Kill the beast. Well, you saw her raise her blade, and so they rush into battle with renewed vigor. Okay. Do I get to quick save before this? That'd be great. I'd rather not have to go through that whole dialogue again, you know, before the next fight if it goes sideways. Yep. Well, there's a type of demon here, a shear. Never been sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Skier? Eh, shear works. What's it got? Masterwork Bardiche. Okay. Well, yeah. It's Masterwork. Masterwork's all. Can't go wrong. Um, okay. Lead on. Let's see. Nothing else in here. Um. So. The door won't budge. Look like it's locked from the other side. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, I wasn't really wanting to, like, run from the fight. Oh, dear. Guys, how many smite evils do you have? You're just, like, firing them out at nothing? Shucks, howdy. Um, okay. A Daskari cultist. wonder why that says 0.0. .0. I wonder what that means. I can't help but wonder if there's, like, some subsystem of which I'm unaware. That's, uh, yeah. Okay. And another... Oh, and a Baphomet cultist next to him. Can I tell them apart? Not particularly. Okay. Oh, did I, did I get a thing? So, Erebeth is apparently going that way. Yeah. We've got some recruits. Staunton Vane. Oh, this man has a name. He's clearly important. Um. Uh. Okay. Well, that was... Let's see here. What did... He's already hurt. Uh, okay. Um, Alright, so Sila. Let's walk forward. I can go forward 19 feet. And we've got like 11 guys here. Okay, so. Neophyte sharpshooter, more Discari cultists. So they use scythes. Scythes are bad news. So, um, so for those of you not in the know, um... So we've talked about critical hits and confirming crits and that sort of thing. So scythes, if you're able to confirm a crit, which they don't have any fancy, like, increased threat ranges or anything in general, but if you confirm a crit with a scythe, that does quadruple damage. So, um, yeah, I use, I've actually played with a, 
I've been at like tables with guys who use weapons like scythes, and he rolls the critical confirmation along with the regular die roll, just so you you know, just to like make it seem more you know more uh, problematic. Um. Anyway, so so I've moved her forward. I've still got her standard action. Um, my guess is the cultists are going to be going after my mooks before they go after us. So, who's up next in initiative? This Baphomet cultist here. Well, in that case, let's just intimidate him. Um, it failed. How, how, how bad did it go? Let's see. I mean, at least she didn't roll a one again. I mean, I, I didn't need to do much better, so anyway. So the sharpshooters up next. Yeah, they're they're they shot at Staunton Vane. That man has a name. You can't just go shooting at people with names. I mean, next thing you're going to be shooting at people who aren't wearing helmets. Okay. So we'll move Camellia up, and we'll try misfortuning this cultist who's up next. So let's see. And apparently, yeah, he, he's a, <laughs> he's planning to attack Staunton Vane, so, um, okay. So, and of course he made his will save, because he rolled a 19. Alright, fantastic. Um. Well, did it not say he was attacking Staunton Vane? I'm confused. There's like a 30 guys here. And... That dude just walked up and took an AOO. Like he just he just shot something at a guy off in the distance. Really? What are you? What is with you people? Okay. Um. So I've got this Baphomet cultist here. I've got a pair of Baphomet cultists here. Um. This one's been buffed, so uh, clo point blank shot is already on. So land. You've crossed the wrong Let's just mongrel. fill this dude with holes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, his little twinkly magical whatnot is just gone, gone now, which is what we wanted. Okay. Fan dabby dabulous. We don't want to leave people in the back lines. Now five foot step forward. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you can be in point blank shot range hopefully next time. Um, so Helwig, who stank up his initiative roll, is uh, back here in the back. So. Alright, so that, I can move up to here. Alright. And maybe finish off this Baphomet cultist in one shot. That'd be nice, since Erebeth and her people just, like, straight up ran forward. And just left people in the back line. Um, no, I rolled a six, so no. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I chose not to do this thing, but... All right. All right. Well, Irabeth has just critted that guy, and he's gone. Um. Okay, Sila. Yeah, let's let's deal with this fella in the back. All right. Cool. He's down. Awesome, Sila. Okay. And now the game gives me information about confirming a critical hit. I'm not opening this. Eh, sure I will. I'll humor the game. So, so, yes. So, yeah. An attack creates a critical threat when you roll a nat 20 or higher for weapons like Sela's Longsword. That, you know, you make an additional attack roll, then you get the critical hit. If not, it's a normal hit. So, I, I keep making the mistake because 2nd Edition Pathfinder does not do that. But, um, anyway. So, yeah. Fantastic. Sela now has her back to to the fight, but hopefully the um the the you know the cultists up there are going to be making a run at Irabeth and her people instead of smacking Sela in the back. Um, we'll see. Yeah. And who killed that guy? Um, the recruit confirmed a critical hit, so he he just ran up because these people don't think to five foot step back. So. So, lesson for people who want to do ranged combat when melee attackers run up. If you step out of their shooting, out of their melee range, you can still shoot. Um, it's not really that hard a concept, so I find it amusing that 
that so many enemies in this game just seem to ignore it. Anyway, uh, Camellia, I don't think we've misfortuned this guy yet, right? So here, move up. Yep. Oh gosh, there's like two more. There's like a billion guys. Is this just going to be like one massive running encounter? Um, okay. So, he is... He... He only needed an eight. Good gracious. I don't know if it's... What all's he got on him? What kind of benefits does this Baphomet cultist have? So... Uh... He's under the effects of both divine favor and bless. Okay. It also says some somebody targeted him with a smite, so that's, you know, may not... He may regret, you know, he may regret his life choices soon, but we'll see. Um, anyway. So, yeah, that's Camellia's turn. <laughs> One damage. Stalton's probably gonna... No, he's just... What the... Okay. Really, guys? Okay, five foot step up, land, and yeah, you can point blank. You can full around the Baphomet cultist. You Have fun. Won't survive me. He's mulched. Okay, and I don't. Who did he shoot at with the other arrow? I heard it go off. Okay, yeah, it doesn't say. I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> I heard the arrow, but yeah, he's all right. So, <laughs> hey, sharpshooter. Okay, Helwig, can you get to that guy? To, can, I'm, I think I can charge him. Can I charge him? Yeah, I can charge. <laughs> okay, there we go. I just annihilated that dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to get Helwig up front. So now that we finally, like, secured our back lines. Oh, why is that guy shaking? Is that a shaken effect? What, why is he shaken? Um, he, did I take some ability that I'm not aware of? Okay, so maybe it's a morale thing. I don't. Oh, okay, yeah. It just don't. Yeah, that's the fancy thing. I forgot. Yeah, my. Uh, <laughs> he just watched me kill somebody with my magical with the magical glaive. That's. Maybe a little on the evil side, but we're using it for good, so it's okay. Um, all right, well, that was Helwig's turn. I don't have any other actions, so. Erebeth will slowly walk forward, and and that's it. That's all she's going to do. Sela, can you charge? No, you can't charge. Your charge lane is broken, so. Um, all right, so. All right. I'm trying to get this where it's only one move. Why can I? There we go. That's that is not impeding into my second, you know, action. So I can still do something else. All right. So demoralize the other sharpshooter, or move again. I'm guessing she doesn't have line of sight. Okay. Whatevs. Just get up there, Sela. Um, sure. Okay, this neophyte sharpshooter is, uh... He's shaken, so... Oh, yeah, there we go. She actually... I was gonna say, she made her thing. Alright, now let's run her up here. Okay. And that's her turn. Okay. Yep, sharpshooter tried to run away and just got killed by an AOO. And... For Canabras, for the Queen. Uh, let's see here. Hang on, I gotta. I like. She said it twice. Apparently, as combat finished. All right. Um. On my way. Let's see, scroll of ray of sickening. Trying to collect all the masterwork stuff. It's rather slow going. The Daskari Cultist. Masterwork Scythe. Okay. Scroll of Protection from Good. Oh, those punks. Is that everything? I think that's everything. 
All right. So that's what about? Oh, hang on. We left this. We we left these cultists behind. You know, the ones that they ran past. So I'm just gonna collect stuff because I've got a feeling the game is not gonna keep waiting for me to. Uh, I don't know. It might. But uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna um gonna do a save right here because yeah, we we've, we've done some stuff right. So so let's see here. Yep. We'll save in that spot. We're about 25 minutes in. Um, I together honestly... Together we stand. Together we stand indeed, Sela. But I've got the suspicion that you know, what's going to go on on the other side of the stairwell here is probably going to make this a rather long video. So I think this is probably the, a good place to press pause. So um, once again, thanks for watching. Feel free to check out the rest of the Nimrandir Plays Wrath of the Righteous series to see a bunch of dice rolling, pathfindering action. Yeah, I mean, not really pathfindering. These characters aren't actually affiliated with the in-world Pathfinder Society, but eh, you get the idea. Anyway, we will catch you next time.